Hello everyone and welcome to our final finger puppet management presentation brought to you by the Five Musketeers. Our group includes Natalie, Cassandra, Megan, Summer, and Sean. Our presentation is going to be based off of the movie Monsters, Inc. Target Market The target audience for the show would be age groups ranging from teenagers to adults. The target market includes the working class, both men and women, who can relate to workplace relationships and having to meet goals that were set in the work field. Format The TV show will be in the format of YouTube videos, and will be in serial format, and will be made up of many, many episodes. Serial format meaning each episode will pick up where the last one left off. Summary, plot. The TV show is based on a parody on the movie Monsters, Inc. The TV show is going to be about two co-workers, Mike and Sully, and how feeling unappreciated can affect someone's work. Poor communication skills, unrealistic goals, and tension in the workplace can cause disagreements and unhealthy workplace competition. Mike and Sully tried working separately after they had an argument about workplace contri contributions and achievements. When the star team was broken up, the rest of the workplace also lost hope and their hard work diminished also. It wasn't until communication took place for Mike and Sully to use conflict management and come to an understanding. The CEO, Mr. Waternoose, only rewards positive numbers and does not create workplace relationships with the other coworkers, other than Sully, really, because he's the best one on the team. Our first character is Sully. He is one of the best scares at Monsters, Inc. Monsters, Inc. is an organization that is designed to be tall and mechanistic. This is because of the fact that there are many rules when it comes to scaring. These rules include, but are not limited to, do not touch or speak to the children. You must get into the room, scare the child until the scare meter fills up, and then get out as fast as you can. Sully is revered in Monsters, Inc. because of the fact that he is very good at following these rules. He is extremely efficient, and he works with Mike in a very good way. He does a very great job at impressing Roz, the floor administrator. Although he is one of the best scares in the organization, he is very compassionate toward others as well. When Boo found her way into the monster's realm, Sully decided to use his absolute moral views to go against the rules of the company so that he could take Boo back to where she belonged in the human world. As Sully and Mike use interpersonal skills to help improve their teamwork to save Boo, Randall trails closely behind in an attempt to murder Sully, Mike, and Boo. The next character is Mike Wazowski. He's a passionate and well-driven monster who works at Monsters Incorporated, a business dedicated to providing power to the monster community through the screams of human children. Mike's, Mike works alongside his best friend James P. Sullivan, who goes by Sully as his scaring assistant. It is Mike's job to make sure that everything is ready and functioning properly for Sully to be able to scare in the safest way possible. Monsters believe that humans are toxic, and being a scarer can be very dangerous because they have to enter the human world daily. In the scaring world, monsters take their job seriously, and must be ready always. Anything can happen when they enter the room of a child. Mike is always organized and ahead of schedule, making sure that Sully always has a new room key, and child to be able to complete the task at hand. His strong passion to produce the best scare results causes him to work hard to keep a good code of ethic by remaining loyal to the company. At times, he does struggle with being honest when faced with confrontation, and he always seems to slip out of any sticky situation. For example, when he finds himself forgetting his paperwork, he is confronted by Roz, who is the third floor administrator for Monsters Incorporated, and he always comes up with an excuse to get himself out of doing the paperwork. This quality displays that Mike isn't always great at making decisions, but he is consistent in his work performing, performance strategy, and together Mike and Sully produce more scare energy than any other scare team. There is always competition that is close behind, but Mike and Sully have the competitive advantage by maintaining the best results. They do this through the positive friendship they share and encourage each other to strive for more. Each morning, Mike assigns exercises for Sully to complete to stay motivated and alert when on the job. 
and when he is on the job, Mike completes his separate task differentiation assigned as well as being dependent upon Sully. By doing this, they produce great results in order to maintain successful operation and please their boss, Mr. Waternoose. Waternoose is the CEO of Monsters, Inc. He is a strict boss that only cares about his associates if they are getting fantastic numbers. Henry Waternoose encourages workplace competition and has used his power to maintain a competitive advantage in the energy company. He sets standards for his employees and expects them to meet his expectations no matter what. He sets unrealistic goals for his, com for his employees, which makes it difficult for the associates to be satisfied with their work environment since they are being overworked. He applies controls by setting standards for the other monsters and monitoring their progress and performance. Only outstanding progress is rewarded or even acknowledged. Working hard goes unnoticed if you are not the best of the best. Waternoose does not get to know his workers and does not have any type of workplace relationship. Henry Waternoose is not concerned with the lives of his employees. He is only concerned with money and the success of Monsters, Inc. Mr. Waternoose lacks interpersonal skills, and this causes his associates to resent him. He is the CEO of the company and is everyone's boss, but he lacks leadership skills and the effective communication skills needed to be an actual leader. He is a manager, and his company does extremely well in the monster's world. His associates are hard workers, and they all produce great numbers. However, after Mike and Sully separate as a team, Mr. Waternoose does not have the trust and confidence from his associates to keep them motivated at work. His associates see Mike and Sully as better leaders and have more of an influence than the boss himself. Mr. Waternoose realizes this and becomes angry that his demanding management style was no longer working. Randall Boggs is another employee of Monsters, Inc. He is a scarer for the company and works alongside his scaring assistant, Fungus, to produce scare energy by entering the closets of children's bedrooms. Randall displays himself as a leader in the scaring world and always is in close competition for the top scarer position as he races against Sully and Mike. Randall scares children by disguising his skin like a chameleon to blend in with his surroundings, so children never know he is there. He does very well at his job and everything asks of him, but also displays many negative qualities. He is extremely jealous of Sully and his scaring abilities and portrays very sneaky behavior many times by going behind his co-workers' backs. This negative decision-making process Randall utilizes causes tension between himself and his co-workers, and he is not liked by many. He is never satisfied with his work because Sully and Mike always come out on top, and he takes his anger and frustration out on Fungus, who has built up a major fear to him. This negative relationship Randall has created with Fungus causes backup in their work due to Fungus's fear for Randall, which causes him to be extremely hesitant and distracted from his work task. Randall does not do a sufficient job at creating an overall positive work environment with his coworkers, and this is a major reason why Randall can never catch up to Mike and Sully. It continues to cause him anger and affects his performance in the workplace, which is not good for operation. Roz is the administrator for the Scare Floor at Monsters, Inc. She is not a main character of the show, but a supporter instead. She does not even have a last name in the show or original movie. Roz is responsible for the paperwork done on the floor and is the key holder for all the doors. Roz is an average worker and does not go above and beyond to achieve goals. Since the company is not hers, she doesn't care to do more than what she is supposed to do. She is a petulant employee that just cares about doing her job and not the other co-workers. The other associates tend to dislike her because she is always asking them about their reports. She oversees Scare's performance in accordance with the terms and conditions of their assigned contracts. She has a negative attitude and does not wish to move up in the company. She acts like that because she is an undercover agent of the Child Detective Agency, and she wants to reveal the poor management system that is going on in the company and the inability of Waternoos to manage the corporation. Celia May is a receptionist at Monsters, Inc. She is also Mike Wazowski's girlfriend. She stays busy throughout her day and is very good at multitasking, usually going way out of her job description to maintain order and complete tasks to conquer goals. Since she is the only receptionist at Monsters, Inc., her job is vital to the company's success. She has great conceptual skills as she sees her surroundings and understands how her team works together to finish goals. She also has technical skills and human skills, 
which go hand in hand. She answers phone calls all day, works with people she doesn't know, and the coworkers she does know. Dealing with paperwork, logging the energy from children's screams, taking and relaying messages, and continuously ensuring the company runs smoothly through efficiency and correct paperwork to send into the boss. At the end of the day, Celia's goals is to keep everything organized and to maintain good productivity and office morals. She continues to prove herself to her colleagues and management, always doing her job correctly and to the best of her abilities. Boo is a supporting character in our Monster Sync episodes. She's a child who escapes from her room into the Monstropolis monster world, and she ended up meeting Mike Wazowski and Sully. She is curious, energetic, sweet. She gets upset very easily. She has a strong love for our main character, Sully, and she's fearful of Randall. Our first episode is the prologue. In this episode, we begin to see how Mr. Waternoose lacks interpersonal skills with the rest of his employees other than Sully. You can see how competitive the work is between each team and how Mr. Waternoose only focuses on the outcomes of the work and does not create relationships with his associates. We focus on interpersonal skills in this episode. Episode 2 is called Individual Behavior. In this episode, Mike gets jealous of Sully because Mike feels as if though he does not get any credit for his hard work to the team. Mike and Sully get into a fight and they decide to work alone rather than together to prove how hard each one of them works. Because the best team in the organization has split up, the rest of the employees start to lose their drive as well. We focus on communication between managers and employees in this episode. Episode 3 is called Conflict Management. In this episode, Randall takes advantage of the best team fighting, and he starts to win the best scores. Mr. Waternoose congratulates Randall and tells everyone that they need to be more like him, and Randall wins Employee of the Month. This discourages Sully and Mike, and they decide to use conflict management to discuss their feelings with each other and their strengths and weaknesses. We focus on conflict management in this episode. Episode 4 is Team Organization and Change. In this episode, Sully and Mike both make up and get back to work as a team. They work together to meet their new goals and use new planning strategies to start encouraging others to set goals and strive for the best. They use their interpersonal skills to have empathy for each other and consider each other's feelings. We focus on setting and achieving realistic goals in this episode. Episode 5 is called Ethical Decision Making in the Workplace. In this episode, Boo slips into the monster's world, and Mike and Sully have to use their ethical decision-making to either turn in Boo to Waternoose or take her back to her safe environment. Sully used moral rights to make the best decision, even if it is against Mike's beliefs. At the end, Mike decides to follow his partner and take Boo back. We focus on ethical decision-making in this episode. Episode 6 is called Innovation. This episode revolves around innovation and brainstorming. Improving the quality of work is important and can be done by considering new ways to make the process more efficient. In this episode, they find new ways to make the process more efficient for making children laugh instead of scream. Episode 7 is called Motivation. This episode is about what motivates workers and how clear objectives are important when motivating associates, as well as staying focused on positive aspects of the job instead of negative aspects. Teamwork can also increase motivation. Each of our episodes have been designed to convey an overall idea to the viewer. We choose one general concept for each episode and plan our shows out to display the concept in action. In episode two, the concept on individual behavior is shown by presenting what behavior and emotions in the workplace can do to individuals and then in turn others around them. The next episode, starts off with Sully and Mike having problems in the workplace and continuously disagreeing. They choose to use conflict management to discuss their issues and skill sets to define their strengths and work together to become a better team. For episode four, team organization and change is shown through Mike and Sully's display of proper teamwork and strategy building to accomplish set goals. Other teams decide to apply new planning strategies like Mike and Sully did after seeing the changes made and the positive outcomes that came from it. In episode 5, ethical decision making was demonstrated when a child escapes into the monster world and is found by Mike and Sully. 
they must make a decision on whether to turn her in to the CEO, Mr. Waternoose, or to help her get back to her world safely. They choose the morally right choice, which displays ethical decision making. Our final episode outline defines stimulating innovation when the company changes for the better to efficiently and ethically obtain power through the laughter from children instead of their screams. The following few slides are our personal and group reflections. The five musketeers want to recommend to future stu students to always remain positive and be flexible when it comes to group work. Communication is key, so always remain in contact with all of your group members so the work can be evenly divided and that everyone can put in their input. Procrastination is not recommended because the class is a lot of work and there are milestones to be met every week, whether individually or as a group. Don't be afraid if you aren't good at writing or te aren't tech savvy. That's why we are put in groups. Everyone has their strengths and weaknesses, and as the five musketeers, we combine those skills to produce our assignments each week and earn positive results. As a group, we found group message and group files to be very resourceful for sharing ideas and posting final work. This class has had its challenges, and there will always be some kinks to work out, but it will be rewarding when you and the group members complete the final project. So good luck, future finger puppet management students from the five musketeers.